Um, and now we'll talk about external influences on media. Uh, first we'll talk about flack, and then we'll talk about advertisers. It's a bit shorter. Um, flack, what does that mean? Flack is a negative response to a media statement, to, to a program. Um, so a, a, an actor says something that people don't like, a journalist, a celebrity, um, a journalist reports on a story that people don't like, they say something uh, bad, and there will be a reaction from the public or from other, other groups of people. And this can take place in many different ways, letters or emails, um, phone calls to the company complaining about that person, right? Maybe there'll be a lawsuit or there'll be a speech. Um, and more, more often, frequently, there's a boycott, right? People said, I, that actress said something horrible, I'm not gonna watch her movies anymore. I'm not gonna watch her TV show, right? Or they call up the advertisers. Right? If you have a show on television, advertisers are very, very important. Right? When people start calling the advertisers and say, I'm not going to buy your product because you advertise on that person's show, then the advertisers will stop advertising. And then that show makes less money, and then the show maybe has to stop. Right? If it's an athlete, it's the same thing. There's a working uh, a football player, and then the advertisers won't sponsor the football team anymore, and then they'll fire the football player for, for saying something bad. Right? So this is a way for uh, outside people to influence media content. Right? Um, and, but we have to think, who can give flag? It's not just anybody. Quite often, it's, it's non-government organizations special interest groups that have, that have lots of money. So for instance, there's special interest groups that want to protect women. So if a man comes out and he says something that's very sexist against women, then the NGO will start a campaign to boycott this person. Right? He said something really wrong, really sexist, so we should not support him anymore. Right? Average citizens can do it. You can start an online petition or something like that. Right? Other media organizations will do it. Right? Um, technically, the government can't really do it. Right? But we're, we're thinking more of act actions of people right? outside the media. Right? So for example, um, it's quite small. Anyway, for example, in, in 2009, there was a Fox TV show host called Glenn Beck. Um, he was a very conservative uh, guy. Um, he had believed in lots of conspiracy theories. Um, and one, one day on Fox News, he said President Obama was racist against white people. He said because Obama was black. So he said Obama is racist against white people. All his policies are to discriminate against white people. And this made many people quite angry because it's a really stupid thing to say, to call the president racist against white people. So many different and many different special interest groups and citizens, they started to boycott the advertisers for Glenn Beck's show. More and more people watched his show. His show was watched by millions and millions of people, but there were no advertisers. So Fox could not make any money from his show. You can have two million people watching, but there's nobody who wants to advertise. So you cannot make any money. So they had to end up firing uh, Glenn Beck because of the weird things he said. Um, sometimes it can be because of actions that people have done. For example, there is a very famous movie producer called Harvey Weinstein. Weinstein, Weinstein. And starting around 2016, but especially in 2017, hundreds of women, actresses and, and various people from Hollywood came out and said, uh, that they were sexually assaulted by Harvey, right? He said, you have to do this thing for me and then I'll help you get into a movie, right? Women who didn't would not get into the movie industry. So he was using his position of power to abuse hundreds of women for many, many years in Hollywood, right? And then people were protesting and NGOs were calling and threatening the company and you know, so eventually he was fired from his company and then now he's in prison probably forever, right? 
Um, another example more recently is the TV show host Ellen. You know Ellen? Yeah. Right? She seems to be very nice and very friendly and very happy on the show, uh, but the many people who worked for her show came out and said, actually, there's a lot of bullying on the show. She kind of yells at people and her producers yell at people. It's not, it's not a good working environment. Right? And her show, uh, because of the pandemic, she wasn't doing the show live. Uh, but then eventually they, they did the show live again, but the ratings went down. Nobody wanted to watch her show anymore because they thought that she was such a bully to treat her, her staff so badly. Right? So this serves as a lesson to people. You have to behave in a certain way when you're making media content, when you're a journalist or when you're a TV show host or whatever. There are certain, you have to behave in a certain way. If you, if you are too racist or too sexist, or you're a bully or you're violent or you sexually assault women, then that's it, your career is over. So that's a very strong external influence on, on media production. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, we're looking at the influence of advertisers. Right. Um, uh, for example, at many, um, many news companies, uh, there are supposed to be two parts to the news company. There's the editorial part, with the journalists and the editors and the producers, and the reporters and the photo photojournalists, right? They're supposed to make the media content, right? Something important is happening in society. We go and we record what's happening and we produce a newspaper or a TV report or an internet post, right? And then there's another part of the company that handles advertising. And these two parts of the company are not supposed to talk to each other. Right? Like we talked about in my, in my earlier lecture in the seminar, journalism is supposed to be independent. The advertisers can't, should not be able to influence journalists to cover certain stories in a certain way because we should need to trust what journalists say, right? But many people who have done research and found that quite often the advertisers do have a lot of influence on the kinds of stories that the journalists would, would report. Right? To get positive coverage of their company, or to not get negative coverage of their company. Right? Media will, news media especially, will, will avoid content that will hurt their advertisers. Right? So for example, if you're a young journalist and you get a, you get a, a story about Toyota, someone, says, someone gives you information that says Toyota cars are dangerous, the, the brakes don't work, and there's many accidents in Toyota cars. And you go to your editor with a story, and you say, hey, I have this great story about these cars are dangerous. We have to warn people about these, this, dangerous, these, this dangerous company. But your editor is thinking, but Toyota is our big advertiser. Toyota gives us millions of dollars of advertising a year. If we publish a story that is negative about Toyota, then they will not advertise with the company anymore, and we'll lose all that money. So quite often, editors will kill these kinds of stories because they don't want it to hurt the company. Right. Media professionals, their livelihood depends on the company being in business and making money. So they will do anything to try and make sure that their company stays in business and makes money. Right. On the other hand, you have to attract an audience. Right? Like we said at the beginning, one way that companies make money is by the consumers, uh, by, by advertisers, by attracting the audience, and you sell the audience to advertisers. So this will very heavily influence the content that you make. Right? For example, if you were making a big Hollywood movie, and the budget is hundreds of millions of dollars, your movie needs to be able to attract as many people as possible. So when you make your movie, you have to be very careful. You have to have some fighting, but not too much. You can't, you can't have blood or heads rolling on the ground or something. You have to have some fighting, some exciting fighting, maybe some, a lot of humor, some funny moments, maybe a little romance, 
not like kissing and, and things like that, but just some light romance between men and women. Right? You, you need to have the heroes win at the end of the story. Right? You need to have all these elements for your movie because this will attract the biggest audience possible. Right? For if you're working for a newspaper, a tabloid newspaper that has a mass audience, it's the same thing. You want your stories to be something that everybody will want to read, to attract as many people as possible. So you don't focus on very serious things, instead you focus on very uh, entertaining things, scandals and celebrities and things like that. Right? On the other hand, you can have a company that has a niche audience, where they, you don't really want to attract as many people as possible, right? So you have a newspaper like Wall Street or Wall Street Journal, or a magazine like National Geographic, or some movies or TV shows, they're made for a smaller audience, right? They're, they won't have a very big budget, right? Um, so anyway, this is the, the, the profit motive for the company changes which kind of content uh, that they will make. And, and in the end, if your company works with advertisers, advertisers want the consumers to be in a buying mood. They want shows that will lightly entertain and, and give people a selling message, right? If you're producing a TV show, a sitcom like Friends, Friends is lightly entertaining. And maybe there's some drama or something like that, but you're lightly entertained by it. And there's some funny bits and some dramatic bits, and then at the end, you know, you don't feel bad, you feel okay, you feel good, right? And this helps the selling message, it helps people uh, get in the mood to keep participating in, in capitalism, right? And so the, they'll produce movies and TV shows in order to kind of fit this, this selling kind of message. So in the end, um, ownership heavily influences the, the content that media produces. Right? Media can make money in a variety of ways, from public funding, or advertisements, or subscription, or the, the, the consumer buying the product. Right? But at the same time, there are increasingly fewer organizations which have more and more power to control media content. And it makes it harder for new companies to start up. Right? Uh, the definition of media is changing a lot because of convergence, right? You can tell by all the different majors that we have that are kind of under media, uh, but they do very, very different things with media. Right? Um, and many different groups outside the media company have a lot of influence as well, such as, as advertisers or um, special interest groups and NGOs. They can also heavily influence uh, the kind of content um, that is made for the media. Yeah. Um, 